Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here of Produce Like a Pro. And today I'm going to look at the entry-level Focusrite I.O., the entry-level interface. So it's the Scarlet Solo, um, tiny little thing, but it's everything we need to make some rock and roll history. All right, so in here we have a rather fetching looking unit. It has a mic input and a separate gain control. Obviously there is a phantom on off control for a condenser microphone. Then we have a quarter inch input and this quarter inch input has an instrument, in, an instrument uh, gain selector and a line gain selector. Now you might ask why that is. Obviously if you plug a guitar in it's going to have a completely different impedance to a line input, say, from a mic pre or something like that. Or probably in most instances, say, a keyboard. And that, of course, has its own gain control. Over to the right, we have a monitor volume control. And we have a direct selection, uh, which you can turn on and off, and a headphone output. Now, the direct, the direct selection is basically so I can just listen to, say, the microphone or the guitar input directly off it. You might ask, why would that be? Well... When you're not using HD systems and you're using, say, the Pro Tools standard, you know, native system, um, you might get a pretty heavy latency. If you're playing like an intricate guitar part, it could probably be a little stressful trying to go da 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 you know, that sort of delay could almost be a sixth note out. So what I often do when I'm using this kind of stuff is I, I turn the direct monitoring on and therefore I can hear what's coming in on the quarter inch input here directly and over the track. We'll show you how it works. It's pretty nifty. Okay, on the back, we have a USB cable, and we have a RCA left and right output for powered speakers. Okay, that's basically it. So let's plug this little baby in and take it for a spin. Okay, here is our cable. Da, da, da. USB. We're going into my old beaten up MacBook Pro here. All right, fantastic. Okay, so we've got uh, Pro Tools open here. Let's go up and hit our playback engine and select the Scarlet Solo USB, this baby here. And okay. Okay, new session. Let's get, uh, let's go for rock guitar. We'll just let it default to 44.1. 24 bit, that's fine. You know what? Just for schnitz and sniggles, I'll go to 48K because most of my templates, if I end up mixing this song that we're about to write from scratch, it'll be at 48K. Okay, we'll just save it on the desktop for the time being. Okay, so here we have it. Here's our nice template. All right, let's, uh, let's plug in some headphones and have a listen what they're giving us. That works for me. Let's start off with a rhythm electric guitar. Cool, so it's plugging in our guitar. I'm a guitar player, so I always start with guitar. Okay, so let's go to our input. We're on input two here. There's a little latency there. I mean, it's not terrible. Let's get some decent level. You see there it's... I like this, so it's green, it lights up on the outside. You keep going up. I'm a, I always push it to the limit a little bit on the. Keep going, see when it overdrives. Clipping a little bit in Pro Tools occasionally. We'll just come down slightly here. Okay, cool. Now, what we're gonna do here, 
because of slight latency, I'm going to go to the direct monitoring. Oh, so it's interesting. For, so what I can hear is a little bit of the DI with the distorted guitar together. Okay, cool. Let's try it. So it was a 12 bar funk groove. Let us take it and loop it. So we'll make it number of repeats. Do a couple of extra bars here. So what I'm doing to do that is I'm highlighting and then I'm hitting option R and I'm putting in the amount of numbers, see? And then we're looping it. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so we have a funky guitar part. Um, let's put another funky guitar part against that. So what I did there is I did shift option D and I will take off the active. What this does is by duplicating the track, I duplicate all the inputs and the outputs and everything. So now what I can do is I can pan the old one over to the right. Sorry. Yeah. And the new one to the left, say for instance, and I can play something against it. Do it. Let's have a quick listen. I'm in input there. Input is option K. In and out. That riff's my favorite. I'm going to copy it to here. And here. And here. That one's great. So on the original, so copy that, paste it over here. Cool, so now let's take those two 12 bar sections and hit option R, and here we go. Okay, so now we have two guitar parts, left and right. Let us do some bass. Now they have a keyboard bass input on this, but let's do, let's do some real bass. I'll use the same thing. I'll go shift option D and create a new track and hit bass guitar. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because it gives me all the inputs. Okay, so we have our bass plugged in. Let's go to our 11 setting here. Let's see if there's any presets. Overdrive, Cream Clunch, Modern. I don't know if it has any bass settings. Let's go vintage clean for the heck of it. Bass has a little bit more output, so let's bring it down here. I'm fine with that. The only thing I would change is obviously a little bit more bottom end here. Let's see what EQ they've got going on here. Nothing, so that's good. All right, great. Um, we don't need the verb going in there, or the delay, or the chorus, or anything. Obviously, the headphone output will stay constant. Okay, great. Let us try this.
I like that second one. I think I had the part down by the second time. Okay, so copy, which is the C button, V to paste, and now we have three sets of 12 bar playing bass and rhythm guitar. Okay, cool. So we've got a, a Lewitt LCT 550 set up here, which is a nice condenser. I'll try not to smash everything while I try to plug it all in. Okay. So let's plug it in here. Let's bring the gain down at first. We're going to create a brand new channel. So Shift Command N for new audio track. Return for create. We're going to come in and see built-in microphone one there. Let's call this acoustic. Now, next thing to do would be to hit Phantom. A little bit of a thump there. Okay, so those of you who watched in my videos will know I'm mic between the 12th and the 14th fret. Or on the body, low down here if it's a pencil condenser. I do that quite often, which sounds fantastic. We'll just do 12th and 14th fret about here. Nothing, fan no fancy settings on the mic, just set to cardioid. Let's make something up. Okay, let's highlight the whole of that again, all 12 bars, hit option R, 2, and let's do our same thing. It's, it's highlighted, so I'm going to hit Shift, Option D, Active Playlist, let's do Acoustic, um, let's, call it, let's call it Acoustic 2. Let's pan one slightly left and one slightly right. Basically it, I think I just want to get that ending better, so I'm going to go in here on that last one. I'm going to hit Command K, which selects my pre-roll, and I'm going to put in two bars, just to give myself a chance to do it. Hit Return, go into Record. <laughs> Okay, so that second time round was pretty cool. So let's take those 12 bars. Let's hit C for copy. Let's paste it in here. And the end here. Okay, great. All right, let's have a listen and see what we got. Okay, great. What we have is drums. Bass guitar. Let's go.
Great. So basically, it's it's a pretty straightforward, easy to use device. Um, I mean, you can make records on it. I don't really see any disadvantages. And with the line input here, um, as opposed to an instrument input, you could, um, you know, you could plug in a keyboard or um, um, another mic pre, and you know, upgrade your system slowly by buying a higher quality mic pre. Having said that, you know, the mic pre is not bad in this. I mean, soloing these acoustics. Let's take the pre-roll off. I'll send a little bit of verb to those, pretty them up a little bit. Great, so I really like that little device, um, the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Um, it's something I could just pack into my luggage and when I'm traveling and working with bands in other parts of the world, I could just take it with me and make music. To be honest, I do do that. I have another little device like that. This may sound a little better, to be honest. The mic pre sounds really good. The line amps sound really good. Um, that's, I have done music for cartoons when I was making a record uh, a couple of years ago and my engineer would work on the tracks and I would do he would send me stuff and I would do overdubs in my hotel room and then upload it to him and he'd drop it in and drop it into the mix so I know that this kind of stuff is a reality and um, as you can see it's quick it's easy to use it's fast it's not complicated I like the simplicity of it we're talking you know one USB cable a mic cable and a guitar cable and some headphones and you're rocking. Now obviously there's RCA outputs on the back which we could take to powered speakers but 99% of the time for me at least I'd be working on headphones with something as simple as this. Um, but you could plug in some power speakers if you have them as well. It's a simple easy way to get started. I think it's a great product. I really do. Um, and it sounds great. So thanks ever so much for watching me, Warren Hewitt, on Produce Like a Pro. Please leave some comments and questions below. I will endeavor to do my best to answer them. I love um, hearing what you guys think. Also, what you use. What do you use? And do you have this? And how do you find it? So please engage and uh, have a marvelous day.